shared this last week. Um, yeah, I just, just want to say again, you know, for me, I, I don't want to go to church and just do church. I don't want to just go and fill in time, space, uh, have that expectation. This is what time we'll get there. This is what time we'll leave. I don't have a problem with the schedule. I mean, I believe in being uh, as disciplined and organized as we can, but we can't put a cap on God, can we? Whatever God has. And last week, I... I don't think I'll ever forget. I'm so thankful for Sister Laura who moved out of her seat and came up. And uh, the presence of God that was so powerful. And uh, this week, we were asked to share in our meeting at work with the chaplains. Uh, they did an exercise of something that had happened in the past uh, month that, that had been a moment that you would like to relive. And I shared with all my fellow chaplains just about the presence of God moving and sending more, going over to pray for prayer, and they put in my arms around her. Those warm tears start flowing down her cheek and hitting the back of my shirt. Just knowing the presence of God is touching a young life. Amen. That is what made a difference in my life. Amen. My dad taking me to the altar with him when it was all our service time. You know, sometimes, I, I'll be honest, and, you know, we go up there and we play Brother day, but, you know, Dad kept rains on us, Mom kept rains on us how much we played, but, you know, it wasn't the place that we always went to give prayer, but it became that place because we learned there and the presence of God worked in our hearts. Let's never, ever take the presence of God for granted. It's working in our hearts and in the lives of of, of those who are young and make a difference in their life for eternity. Amen. Turn with me tonight to Isaiah chapter number 26. Isaiah 26, once again, good to have our visitors here. Amen. Uh, see them uh, around and so it's good to have them in church with us and uh, worshiping God. Amen. I love when God's presence brings folks together, don't you? Amen. Amen. We are one in Christ. Amen. Our brothers and sisters. Probably one of my favorite scriptures to think about and meditate upon. I share it uh, sometimes in quoting. But the Word of God says that thou will or you will uh, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Amen. In the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For just a, a few moments this evening, I want us to look at the Word of God. And I want us to focus on that phrase, whose mind is stayed on thee. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Do you know we have to make decisions every day? Every one of us makes decisions. We, we will we'll make decisions in our life. Hundreds of decisions every day. Whether we think about it or not, we're making decisions. And uh, you've already made many today. And, and so, uh, how many of you have made decisions today? And then you already changed your mind on it. Now you already said, ah, oh, I changed my mind. I'm not going to do that. And, you know, we make decisions. We change our mind. And, 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 but, but one thing that's for sure is it takes discipline to stick with a decision. Are you with me? It takes discipline to stick with a decision. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it can be really tough to decide. Commitment is a hard thing. And, 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 and from the beginning to seeing it through, we know that it can be tough. Uh, how many of you ever worked with that word called a diet? Now, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's a lifestyle change. I understand. But it's still a diet. You have to make up your mind that you're going to stick with it and make it all the way through. There are things that we have to make up in our minds. And we have to be stubborn, if you would, about that our mind is made up. I wonder this evening, wouldn't it be a great thing to be stubborn in our mind for God? Amen. God, I'm going to serve you no matter what. I'm never going to give up. God, I'm never going to compromise no matter what. There's nothing that's going to cause me to turn away. 
There's no person, there's no money, there's no relationship that's going to take me. Uh, and the prophet uh, uh, Isaiah said, amen, uh, he'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Let me read it this way. People with their minds set on you, God, you will keep them whole, you will keep them steady on their feet because they keep, uh, they keep it and won't and don't quit. Amen. If we keep our minds upon God, He is a sure thing tonight. Now bear with me a little bit. There's sometimes I need to not move past the elementary things. Amen, so to speak, because there are folks who need to hear it. Amen. If this is past you and you say, I understand, I'm beyond that, that's okay. Just allow me to lay the foundation. I, I need to say that there's power in discipline. There's power in determination. There's power in a made-up mind. Amen. God wants us to have our mind made up. Even so that when He spoke in the book of Revelation, He said, I don't want you to be lukewarm. I either want you to be hot or I want you to be cold. That means your mind is made up. That person who's lukewarm is straddling the fence. One day they want to serve God. The next day uh, their heart is drawn to the war of the world. But maybe it's, it's a very putrid place to be. And God said, I want you to have a determination either way. Uh, because if you're in the middle, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And so that's why heaven celebrates over the repentance of one sinner. Luke 15 tells us all about the rejoicing in heaven when one mind makes up for itself that they are going to serve God. Listen, moms and dads, you can't make a decision for your children. Children in here, mom and dad can't make your decision. You've got to make a decision that you're going to serve and love God. Spouse, you can't make up a, a, a decision for your partner. They have to make it up for themselves. you got to make the decision. Everybody has to reach the point in their life where they say, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to love Him. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to obey Him. I'm going to serve Him with all of my heart. I'm walking with God and it is an act of my will and I'm submitting my will toward God. I'm serving Him unconditionally. Now folks, there's times we need to vision this decision. Because there's been folks who've served the Lord for many years and they said, my mind is made up. And the next thing you know, uh, they're, they're not attending church the way they used to. Their Bible reading is, uh, is not there. Their prayer is not there. Uh, their, their separation from the world is not there. So visiting this, that my mind is made up, I'm keeping my mind on God. Because when it's made up and it's on God, He keeps me in perfect peace. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me, you know, others can serve uh, the gods of the Amorites, uh, but, but I choose to, uh, to, to serve God. Uh, and, and my mind is made up. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The power of a made up mind. See, every day you wake up, you're presented with choice. Every day you go to work, you're presented with choice. Even when you come to church, you're presented with choice. The choice of serving God and keeping your mind upon Him. See, there are days, folks say to me all the time, well, I don't feel like going to church. There's days I don't feel like going to church. Well, let me tell you, from the pulpit to the pew, there's always going to be those times where we might feel like we're tired or we're exhausted or we're wore out. But even when we are wore out, there needs to be the choice. I am going to church. You may say, I don't feel like praying. I'm just tired. God knows anyway. You still have the choice. I'm still going to pray. Amen. I, I, I don't feel like worshiping, Brother Seville. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. You don't know my situation. You still are presented with the choice. I am still going to worship regardless. Jesus wants us to have a made-up mind. I'm going to obey. I'm going to serve. I'm going to praise Him. Amen. I, I wonder tonight how many is in this church who will say, I have a made-up mind. You don't have to raise your hand to me. But raising your, 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 your choice to God, I, my mind is made up, God. I'm serving you unconditionally. My mind is going to be kept upon you. I want to look at someone from the Bible who is amazing to me. 
who had the opportunity to compromise, but he didn't. I admire this man named Moses. Moses. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's right. I'm not saying he didn't lose his cool costume, didn't he? But he was a man that when I look at his life, he could have very actively compromised. But he said, no, my mind is made up. The prophet said that when our mind is made up and when our mind is kept upon him, he will keep us in perfect peace. In a world where school shootings are becoming as common in the news as anything nowadays. It's sad. But God can keep us in perfect peace. In a world where wrong is called right and right is called wrong, God still wants us to have our mind made up and He wants to keep us in perfect peace tonight. And so the example of Moses, that there's peace when your mind is totally committed to Him. And there's comfort and there's strength that comes when our mind is made up. Let me repeat that. There is comfort and there is strength when our mind is made up and it's kept upon God. And so God, he calls Moses from the burning bush. And Moses made a decision that day that I'm going to serve God and I'm going to go full force forward with him no matter what the cost. Once again, I'm going to show you from the word of God. He had opportunity to compromise, but he did not compromise. Amen. When we come to that holy moment, amen, where we take our shoes off because we're on holy ground where it's us and God and we're making a relationship with God and a commitment to God that says, God, at any cost, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to follow you no matter what. Amen. It will bring comfort and it will bring strength to us. In Exodus 20, verse number 8 and verse number 27, the Bible says, And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet for us to do so, for we shall, uh, shall uh, 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 sacrifice the abomination uh, of the Egyptians uh, to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and, and they and they will not stone us. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. Here it is that in this account, God previously instructs Moses. He said, I want you to go three days journey into the wilderness and I want you to offer sacrifices unto me. But we find that Pharaoh won't let them go. He says, no, you, you, you can't go. Pharaoh says, uh, listen, uh, we, we know that, that God starts sending the plagues and things were getting terrible. Can you imagine the plagues are coming there in Egypt? And, and for a lack of a better word, it's becoming nasty. Pharaoh's upset. The people are upset because of the plagues that are coming. And Pharaoh won't let Israel go. And finally he said, you can sacrifice to your God right here in Egypt. Moses said, Pharaoh, it's not a compromise. See, my mind's made up. My God has told me to take me and the people and our cattle and our belongings three days and go and sacrifice to Him. And so after 400 years, you see that there is some progress. And Pharaoh's saying, okay, you can sacrifice to God right here in, in, in Egypt. And, 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 and you would think that Brother David would be encouraging. After 400 years, Pharaoh's given him a compromise. Moses just compromised. Moses said, no, there's not room for compromise. God has asked me to do, and I will do what God has called me to do. You see, Moses refused to compromise. Moses refused to sacrifice in the land of Egypt. He said, my mind is made up. Remember this, that Egypt is always a type of the world. Egypt is a type of sin. And we find that, that, that Israel represents the church. And so we have to have a made up mind that we are going to worship and we are going to serve God. Not the world's way, but we're going to do it God's way. 
Let me just stop for a moment. There are a lot of folks that will say, and I, I, I love being outside as much as anybody else. Amen. But some folks will say, well, 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 the outdoors is my church. That's where I worship God. The Bible says to forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. Amen. There are a lot of other little details that I could go into that are big details. Amen. The world wants to compromise God and what they have. And when it comes to, to, to how the Bible tells us where to conduct our living, the, the, the world will say compromise with us. We see so much going on in, in the mind a seeker sensitive church a world that we live in uh, there's so much that, that they just let go because they want to embrace the world and God. it doesn't work that way God says that he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee there's no compromise Moses said he's my comfort he's my strength my mind is made up that I'm going to serve him at any cost, so there's no room for compromise. Listen to the next verse, in verse number 28 of Exodus chapter 8. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for, uh, entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee. So here it is that, 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 that uh, Pharaoh says, okay, you can go, but you can't go as far as what you said your God told you to go. Wow. You can go, but you can't go that far. You can't go that far away. God said three days uh, a journey, but, but, but you can't go that far. Uh, uh, Pharaoh's making some concessions with them. Uh, 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 he said, you can go, but, 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 but not as far as you want to go, or God says you can go. See, there's some folks that grab hold of the Bible and say, I believe some of them, but I don't believe all of it. Some of it's just not applicable. God is looking for us to be sold out. It's either the whole world, or it's not at all. God's looking for folks who will have a made-up mind. Amen. He doesn't care if you study the Bible. He just don't want you to find salvation. He doesn't want you to find sanctification. But God's calling us to go all the way. You see, God wanted him to get where the city was out of sight. You can go a, a couple days' journey, but the city would still be in sight. God said, no, I want you to go where the city's out of sight. God doesn't want you to serve Him while you're still looking at the world and what's left behind. We talked Tuesday night about a, a, a Lot's wife. And God said, I want you to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I want you to run to the mountain and the plain that we find that somewhere behind a lot, Lot was running and his wife was behind him and she turned around and she looked back. The problem was there was part of the world that was still in her. God was calling her out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Sodom and Gomorrah had got in her and she was turning around and looked back. And Jesus said to his disciples, once again, I don't mean to be redundant when I said Tuesday evening, it was his disciples, those that were loving him, and serving him. It wasn't those uh, Pharisees and, and, and Sadducees. It wasn't the world. But Jesus said, I want you to remember a lot's wife. Amen. There's a day coming when I'm going to return. And when I return, I want you to be running toward me, not turning around looking behind you. Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. God said, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon on thee. It's saying, God, I'm not living as close to the world as I can, but my mind is made up that I'm serving you. And when you make up your mind, there will be strength and there will be encouragement in a made up mind in the presence of God. When we make up our mind to serve God, there will be a distance between us and between sin. 
Sometimes I question what folks are saved from because they live so close to the world. Where God has a world of black and white, Brother David, man has created a huge gray area that he thinks he can inhabit. When God says, I'm wanting to move from that area, but I haven't made a mind. I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. It still is called out from heaven. Come out from among them and be separate. You see, Pharaoh didn't want to let them go three days' journey, but he will two days. But God hadn't commanded two days. God commanded three. You know what? Just like Moses, it is going to take us some spiritual discipline to say, I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to go the distance. Amen. Verse number 8, the Bible says, And Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go and serve the Lord your God, but who are they that shall go? Shall go? And, and Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and our daughters and our flocks and, and, and with our herds will, will we go. Uh, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said unto them, uh, let, let the Lord be so with you as I let you go. And your little ones look forward to it. For evil is, is before you. And not so. Go now ye that are men. He said, okay, I'll let you go, but the men can go. The rest have to stay behind. Well, David, you said it well tonight. We've got to pray for our families. Listen, I'm not leaving my children back in this world. I'm not leaving my wife back in this world. I'm not leaving anyone who I can influence back in this world. When God calls us to be sold out for Him, I'm taking everybody with me. Amen. If you haven't made up mind tonight, amen. Some of you have children that aren't saved. Amen. You got to keep praying for them. We're not leaving them in this world, but God's calling us out. Amen. And as God calls, we're taking them with us. Amen. Some of you maybe have a spouse that isn't saved. Keep praying for them. I'm not moving unless we can all move. Amen. I'm not compromising. I want to go. I want my family saved. You see, we can't leave our loved ones behind. We have to keep doing our best to lead them to salvation. I believe that God's going to do a work in them. Do you believe that for your family tonight? Let's stop. Listen, the greatest thing that you can give your family tonight is salvation. The knowledge of Jesus Christ. I know you can't save them. Only God can save them. But it should be your prayer daily that God would deal with their never dying soul, would bring them to an altar of repentance where they uh, pray that God would forgive their past and the blood of Jesus Christ would be applied to them and they would have an assurance of eternity in heaven. Let me tell you, I can provide a lot of things for my girls. I can provide them a good life and comfort, and hopefully education, things that, and that, that, that um, this side of heaven may seem. But if I forget about God, I don't lost it all. God help us that we will not compromise with our family. Not compromising with the family. Enemy, there's no compromise. There's no compromise with the world. There's no compromise with sin. But I'm going to make God's way. And God will give me strength. And God will give me protection and wisdom as I do. He will keep me in perfect peace as my mind is stayed upon you. So you have grandchildren. Keep praying for them and believing that God is going to work and move. Mm -hmm. See then, Pharaoh makes a compromise with them and says, okay, just leave your flocks and your herds behind. You can take the little ones with you. Moses said, no. See, I'm going to worship God. And that's what I'm taking to worship God. Don't allow the enemy to compromise your worship tonight. Do you hear me? He didn't want to stifle your voice. 
He'd want to stop your praise. He'd want to compromise it with all types of diluted down things. But God wants a clean and a pure heart. God wants holy hands. God wants a voice and a heart that is lifted to Him. There is no compromise. Pharaoh says, well, leave your things here. You can take everything, but leave your things here. And Moses said, no, there's no compromise. I'm not leaving my things here because when I leave, I'm not coming back. The Word of God says that where your treasure is, there is your heart also. I'm not leaving my treasure in this world, but my treasure is in an eternal place and I'm keeping it there. There's no compromise, enemy. May I ask, where is your treasure at tonight? Amen. Are you truly lost in the things of God? Amen. If you lost your house today, your car today, uh, even your money today, uh, where would you be? Uh, the greatest thing that you and I should be laying up for ourselves is treasures in heaven. For where our treasure is, there our heart is also. I'm not compromising, enemy. Should I? I'm not leaving a hoof behind. That's my sacrifice. I'm not leaving my things behind. There's no place of sacrifice. You see, the enemy would want us to compromise. Just a breath of you come to the piano. Give me a few more minutes. You may say, Brother Seville. I look around and there are folks that love the Lord that are here. Yes. And that's all we preach the message. Because there cannot be room for compromise in our hearts. He didn't run their ways well. Who did hinder you? Because the enemy would want to get you to compromise. Moses had every opportunity to compromise. Then after 400 years, Pharaoh's at least making a compromise. This is for some folks would say, I'm going to jump at that. But I'm, jump at that, go. In 400 years, brother, this, you've not seen any type of compromise. Listen, I'm not talking about what we're eating for supper. I can compromise that. I'm not talking about what clothes we're going to wear today. I can compromise that. Well, within reason. <laughs> I'm not talking about what vehicle we're going to drive. We can compromise that stuff. But there's no room to compromise in our walk with God. Mm -hmm. He wants it all. He wants everything. I love my wife with every part of my being. I can tell her this. I got all teary out at work. We went through these exercises on how one is to get to know one another, uh, the chaplains, and we were to reflect on the greatest things in our life in two minutes. That one of my greatest memories is when the church door opened and my beautiful bride walked down the aisle. My tears, all. Oh, it was touching. I still think about that. My bride. Every bride's beautiful, right? I mean, their day, that was my bride. Brother David, I was carnal. If I could relive 30 seconds of my life, what would it be? Oh, Doug, I said, that would be my honeymoon. Walking on the beach at night, holding hands, just talking and being vulnerable. Wonderful time. But my wife's not mine. For whatever season that God gives us, God has blessed me. Brother Dennis, even my own girls are mine. They're a gift from God. And so, Brother David, when you dedicated them to the Lord, I was saying, God, here they are. They're yours. And so whatever you choose for them, you take their lives and you lead them the pathway that will give them the most glorious reward in eternity. There's nothing we can hold on to in this life. Everything is fleeting. And so what do we have to do? We have to say, God, I'm going to have a made up mind. And I'm placing my treasures in heaven. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee 
Amen. After some of the most holy experiences, Moses there before a burning bush. God leading you to Pharaoh, taking you from the backside of the desert, giving you the opportunity to be the leader that you wanted to be so many years before. And God's bringing that dream to fruition. But Moses said, I can't compromise now. Even after a holy experience, there's not room for compromise. I must see it through that God will keep me in perfect peace. So how does Moses stand up before Pharaoh, Brother Wally? He stands up because he has strength and he has peace in knowing that his mind is made up. And Pharaoh, this is not compromising ground. Tonight, we've got to have our mind made up and kept in Christ so that there's no ground to be compromised. It's too valuable to lose the treasures of eternity now. It's too valuable to compromise our soul or to hurt the souls of those round about us. So I will keep my mind made up and I will be in perfect peace knowing that I think about God continually. Tonight I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know that God's laid this on my heart. You've got to have a made up mind. I've got to have a made up mind. No compromise. I'm not living close to the world, but I'm getting as far away as I can. I'm not leaving anything, Sister Bev, in the world. But all my treasures, they're laid up in heaven. And there they will be kept to someday, he says to me, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou here. Can I have some folks who will come have an experience where you just put your mind upon God tomorrow? As you walk into work or you face situations at home, in power and encouragement and peace, you can say no, no compromise. My mind is made up. Let's gather in and find a place of prayer tonight. Lord, Jesus. Thank you. 